So I get this question on YouTube and my streams all the time. What is the best budget-friendly premium paddle controller for PlayStation 4? And coincidentally, this pairs to PS5 as well. Instead of answering that question continuously until my throat is drier than the Mojave Desert, I'm gonna direct people to this video. It is this controller right here. It is this controller right here in my hand. This cheap, chintzy piece of plastic right here in my hand. You just want the best controller on the market. You're a big baller. This probably isn't the video for you. I have tested dozens of premium controllers from AIM, Scuff, Battle Beaver, Razer, Microsoft Elite 1 and 2, Nacon Revolution. My brain just shut off, but there's a ton more. You can find this between $20 and $50 all day on Amazon. I think a lot of Walmarts actually stock this bad boy. It has four remappable paddles, short pull triggers, and ergonomically, it's just comfortable as shit. Let's get it. Alrighty guys, over here at the Stormtrooper desktop, if you're new to the channel, this is where we do our unboxings, custom controller builds, and a whole lot of other fun stuff. So, this actually has another kick-ass feature that I forgot to mention during the intro because, well, I'm old, I'm elderly, I forget things. This actually has swappable thumbstick and analog stick modules, kind of like the Astro C40, which, by the way, is like a $250 controller. So in the box, which might not look exactly like this because there are a ton of these cheap Chinese generic controllers, you just want to make sure that it looks exactly like this, the controller. And you will find these on Amazon all day. I will have them linked in the description below so you can scoop them up. Uh, the highest you should ever pay for this, where I think it's still a good value, is 50 US dollars out the door, including tax and shipping. But you will find these on sale for about $20, $30 all day. I bought this one for $18. That is specifically why I bought this controller considering I have reviewed this exact controller probably about nine months ago. And I paid, I think 40 or 50 bucks for that one. But I wanted to touch on it again as I'm getting this question all the time. Kevin, AK40 Kevin, what is the best budget controller for a PlayStation 4? And like I said, it also does work on PC and the PlayStation 5, as long as you're playing PS4 games on the 5. You just link it up wirelessly. I can turn my console on and off with this bad boy. I can navigate all the menus, but whenever you launch a proprietary PlayStation 5 game like Miles Morales, Sackboy, Astro's Play Playroom World, then of course you get that notification in the top right that you cannot use a PS4 controller on a PS5. But what are you going to get when you buy one of these cheap bad boys? Thank you for asking. You're going to get your controller wrapped up in some bubble wrap, which is beneficial for two things. One, it keeps your controller safe for transit to you. And two, this is just several minutes of satisfaction here. It's sheer orgasmic pleasure. You do get a little instruction manual here. I don't know how to read, but I'm going to do my best. It is very large font, so for somebody like myself that basically escaped from their retirement home and is past the point of no return, I don't have the eyes of an eagle like I used to when I was a young bucking stallion, but I can easily read this here. English is the primary language, which is always a treat considering you know this was created in some Chinese sweatshop somewhere. You do get a uh, rather short three or four foot micro USB cable here, so really nothing special, but it's all you need to pair it up to your PS4 or PS5 and to charge it, so there's that. Then you also get a couple of rubbers, boys. Now, I don't use rubbers. I haven't since back in the Civil War, but um, basically these slide over, and basically these slip over the... Oh, I can't figure this out, but basically they, they slip over these existing rubber pads, but these stock ones that are installed feel stupid good. So when I mentioned during the intro, ergonomically, this is incredibly comfortable. That comes down to two things. One, the shape and weight. So I guess three things, if we're gonna loop those together. The, it's very light, but doesn't really feel necessarily cheap or chintzy. Uh, ergonomically, very, very good. It feels very similar to like an Xbox One or Xbox Series controller, which is fantastic for most standard North American hands. But you also get this really soft, smooth, rubberized material on there, which also, I have to say, looks pretty good as well. These do come in other colors. I think the last one I tested on this channel was kind of a puke green, and this is more of a, you know, Kevin Soul black, pitch black. So I like this more personally, kind of that murdered out look. 
So analog sticks do feel a little bit short. I feel like the travel is a little bit shorter than the standard PS4 controller, but not bad. You can still get a good aim. I would probably put a thumbstick cap on there, something like Control Freaks or a third party version. That'll be linked in the description below as well to get a little bit more leverage when you're doing those finite movements, uh, those accurate movements. Left stick doesn't matter. It's just for walking around. So I wouldn't, I don't care about that too much. Face buttons do not feel good on this bad boy. However, they have paddles, four of them, that you can remap all the face buttons to, so I barely use the face buttons anyway. And they do work, they just don't feel very good. There's virtually no resistance to them. They feel kind of sloppy toppy. <laughs> You'd get more satisfaction from fingering a jar of mayonnaise than pressing these face buttons. It feels super cheap and chintzy. It works, you can draw on it, you can click down on it. It just doesn't feel very good to the fingertips. But you get all your PlayStation controls. It has the motion sensing in there. It has the built-in speaker. It has the light bar. So this has full functionality for PS4 slash 5. Uh, the D-pad actually does feel really good, like better than a regular Xbox or PlayStation 4 controller. It has a nice tactile click to it. It feels amazing. And uh, you have this D-pad wheel on here, which is really good for fighting games, busting off those sweet combos. But if you want to remove that, you can. It's magnetized, and then you just have a four-way D-pad like that. I personally think it looks better, feels better, and performs better with the wheel on there. Personal preference. Bumpers feel, eh, fine. I mean, they're bumpers. You're, you're bumping. They feel fine. Triggers. They are short pull triggers, so there is no external trigger lock, so you will need to have a separate controller if you play a lot of racing games and stuff, as you won't be able to modulate the throttle and brake, uh, as it's basically all or nothing with these. It's zero to a hundred, real quick, like Drake had said. Um, but as you can see, real short pull there, which is good if you're shooting uh, semi-automatic weapons quickly. Very nice. You can do a little uh, paintball uh, finger roll. Little known fact, this channel actually started as a paintball channel about two and a half years ago. And then I realized, well, for one, that's super niche. Two, I really wasn't paintballing that much anymore. And uh, yeah, it just kind of evolved into what it is here today, which is an absolute dank banger of a channel, I must say. And then you uh, have these two status lights here in the middle, which light up in conjunction with the touch bar on the top there, which is kind of nice. I, I, it kind of looks like some little evil eyes staring back at you. That's pretty cool. And then you also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the bottom. You do not have that standard PS4 accessory port, uh, which nobody really uses for anything, but you don't have that. Um, the only thing I see that used for is the DualSense 4 paddle attachment, which gives you two paddles and a little, little flippity LCD screen back there. However, this has four paddles and they feel dope, which is what we're talking about right now. You have, you have N1 and 2 and M as in Mike 1 and 2. These are remappable. I'll show you that when we head in the living room on the PS5 in there. But why I like these paddles so much, they are up and out of the way to where you never accidentally actuate them. You have to intentionally want to press them because they have a good tactile click to them. Most importantly, if you're watching Scuff or Corsair, who bought you a while ago, um, I have been blatantly honest about the fact I greatly, greatly dislike my personal preference. I greatly dislike the scuff paddle system. It feels flimsy. It feels cheap. And most importantly, it's ergonomically horrendous. It is impossible to cover all four of those, those paddles that look like sticks of gum hanging off your controller. You have to shift your fingers back and forth or ho hold it like this, like the guy from Scary Movie to cover all four of the paddles. It is not a good design. There's a lot of other people with bigger brains than mine that concur with that statement. Okay. Awesome. Yep, that's it. Alright, dude. Mm, Alright, later. So how do you swap that module in there? Thank you for asking. You want to remove this little magnetic D-pad wheel right here. You want to make sure it's stuck to your finger and it goes flying into your action figures. Uh, that's going to add about 20 frames per second to your gaming PC. You want to take a fingernail. Uh, hopefully you have fingernails. And you want to pry up. Okay. Uh, on this little magnetic tray right here. Um, and, and that is exactly where you want to grab it from. If you try and grab it from anywhere else, you're going to be riding the struggle bus. And then you take this little tool right here, which actually stores in the back of the controller, which I like because 
you would lose this or your dog would eat it like immediately. So that's pretty cool. And then you had these little flathead screws in here, which if you lost this, you could just use a flathead screwdriver. But I mean, this tool is included on the controller. And basically you turn these lefty loosey. There we go. Pops out like that. And then you just flip it or reverse it, which for me personally, I definitely prefer the offset analog sticks like that. I don't like the, um, not linear, what's the word? Symmetrical sticks, like the PlayStation controllers, I personally think it's more ergonomically comfortable to have the offset sticks like an Xbox controller. The total total personal preference, one's not right, one's not wrong, but uh, the fact that you can do both with this little $20 to $50 controller, that's awesome. Like I said, the only other premium controller that I have tested or seen that does that is the Astro C40, and that goes for about $250. And from what I've seen, it's actually more expensive than that because it's like virtually impossible to find right now. Then you're just gonna replace this magnetic thing, put this back on there, bam. So for use on the PC, you literally just plug a micro USB cable directly to the front of your tower, um, and it'll connect no problem. It does also have Bluetooth, so. If you want to use Bluetooth, you can. However, I don't like Bluetooth. I mean, I have to make do with it on the PS4 and 5, but I think Sony handles Bluetooth incredibly well. For me, if I'm going to do wireless, I prefer some kind of a dedicated 2.4 gigahertz dongle as it is a quicker means of wireless data transfer. Uh, but, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't Bluetooth this to my PC considering I'm sitting right here. I would just plug into the front of the tower. But for the console... For sure, I'm about that casual console life when I'm in the living room, so uh, we're gonna pair this up to the PS5. All right, so let me demo this bad boy for you guys, give you guys a little demonstration as to why this is the best $20 to $50 controller. Let's just say $50, because like I said, that is the highest you were going to see this bad boy for. So we just plugged it up and, oh my God, these paddles don't even work. Time to return this piece of crap. Not quite. You can actually turn the paddle functionality on and off. So if you're playing a game that you do not want paddles on, say if you're playing Crash Bandicoot or something, you turn them on and off by pressing this little Harry Potter forehead lightning bolt and options for about two seconds. The function lights will pulsate for a few seconds and then go solid. And now, as you can see, the paddles do indeed work. But that alone right there isn't enough to fully stimulate me, so let's take it a step further. Let's go ahead and remap these. You're gonna press share and any of the four paddles on the back. Now you are gonna press whatever uh, face button you want. So I want X and then you press the paddle that you want it mapped to, bam, and now you are mapped. So again, that's share and then any, you wanna hold down share and any of the paddles for about two to three seconds until these blue lights flash. Then you are gonna press whatever face button or D-pad button or bumper or whatever you want and then the paddle in the back and it will map them like that. But that's not all boys, this also has turbo functionality. So say you're unfortunate enough, you're playing Apex Legends and you know, you are, you were a piece of shit in a past life and karma's coming up to get you and you pick up a P2020, which is a semi-automatic pistol. Okay, so let's press down this turbo button and the right trigger. Now, oh my goodness, it has a built-in mod chip. Yep, that's pretty cool. So again, I wouldn't use that in tournament use or anything like that, but if you're playing some uh, open pubs or you're playing an on, off, offline uh, story mode or zombies or something like that, that is pretty cool. And then again, to turn that off, you're just gonna press the turbo button and whatever button you have it mapped to. And now we'll be back in semi-auto, which I gotta say, I do like that short trigger pull. So when you go to turn this controller off, it will save all of your presets, which is absolutely awesome. However, it will turn off the turbo functionality, so you will need to turn that on manually next time you turn on the controller. But it does save all of your mappings, which is awesome. So wrapping up here, guys, I do think this is the best value PS4, PS5, and PC controller out there, as you can find this all day under $50, and you can quickly turn the paddles on and off. Same thing with the... Uh, turbo function, if you pick up a semi-automatic rifle or something, you can instantly turn that on, which is pretty awesome. Ergonomically, it is freakishly comfortable. I like those short pull triggers. The fact you can swap the thumbsticks for your preference, the fact there is a magnetic D-pad, and uh, did I mention it's under $50? There's a reason that I recommend this controller. And keep in mind, I have tested two $300 controllers uh, quite frequently on this channel. But as far as a good budget option, I mean, this is literally un unparalleled, uncontested in the space. If you enjoyed this video, put an extra two inches on your peen. Liking the video helps to get seen by more people, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate, encourages me to keep making content like this. I do a lot of news in the gaming community and industry, as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, and I will see you in the next video. Oh yeah, this is linked in the description below. Peace.